Hi everyone and welcome back to the Hair Loss Show. In today's episode, we're gonna talk about the top four uh, topical treatments of 2025 and rank them in order of uh, preference. Hi everyone, welcome back to the show. One of the most common questions we get asked is about topical treatments. Some patients really don't want to take an oral medication and so prefer using a topical treatment. And topical treatments are great because the effect is going to be more localized to the area. And also one of the other benefits that you can get is that there's going to be less systemic side effects. And one of the things that people do worry about when they're taking oral medication is what are going to be the systemic side effects that are of this medication. So it's probably less so uh, with uh, topical medication. So I want to rank the top four topical treatments uh, that can be used uh, today in 2025 and probably I've got to say that this list is somewhat changing. All right. Uh, if you had asked me a couple of years ago, the list would have been very different uh, today. Ask me again next year, the list may change. There's good data to come out to suggest that we may move things uh, around. So this is going to be great uh, for you in terms of information. So in fourth place, I'm going to use a uh, topical ketoconazole that commonly comes in a shampoo based format. Now ketoconazole is an antifungal treatment and uh, we know that uh, for a lot of people they have a buildup uh, of spores of fungus on the scalp that can result in hair shedding and so the topical treatment of ketoconazole can help clear that up. But we also know that ketoconazole has a weak but definite antiandrogen effect and therefore can reduce uh, the effect of that level of DHT and therefore stop you from losing hair. So it is good, all right? It's important to be used correctly. So shampoo needs to be applied to the scalp, be left on for six to eight minutes before it's washed off. But it can be used as a good adjunct along with the other treatment options as well. So that's number four. So number three top topical treatments is dutasteride. I actually really like dutasteride. I really like dutasteride in the oral format. And I think there's some good data coming out which suggests that we may uh, this may shift up the list a little bit. But for the time being, uh, topical dutasteride is a very new compound uh, in the sense that we've only relatively recently started using this regularly uh, in patients. Uh, dutasteride works to block the 5-alpha reductase enzyme, blocking that conversion from testosterone to dihydrotestosterone. And dutasteride actually blocks the two types of 5-alpha reductase enzyme, type 1 and type 2 as well. The issues historically that I've had with topical dutasteride is that dutasteride is actually quite a large molecule. It has a large molecular weight. And as such, the ability for that molecule to penetrate through the stratum corneum, which is the top layer of the skin, has always been a challenge. And there are mechanisms that we can use to try and you know, improve that. There are things that we can add uh, to the formulation. Uh, such as caffeine um, that can try and help boost the penetration of dutasteride. Yet still, the molecular weight is, is quite large. You can use it in combination with derma rolling as well. That creates some tiny little channels which also help improve the penetration uh, of, uh, of the molecule as well. And then there are physical methods in which we can try and push this large molecular weight molecule through the top layer of that skin. So there's a process of ultrasonification and cavitation. There's a, many devices on the market that will help do that. Things like Trichopat, which will help push these molecules through that top layer of skin and therefore it can work quite localized at the level of the hair follicle. And so, uh, you know, watch this space because a lot more data is coming out about the effectiveness of uh, topical uh, dutasteride. And then number two in my list uh, of topical treatments uh, that I recommend in 2025 is minoxidil. Now minoxidil has been great, it's stood the test of time, it's been around for the last uh, 25, 30 years, uh, it's freely available over the counter. Generally topical uh, minoxidil comes in a 5% formulation, it comes in as a liquid or a foam uh, and it, you apply it to the scalp and I think it's great. It's, it's great because it has got good data to support its effectiveness. It acts as a stimulant to try and stimulate the hair growth. It's basically like getting a whip and cracking it on the hair and telling the hair to grow. Uh, and it's good because it's also got next to no uh, side effect profile. 
All right, so, and that's why certainly here in Australia, it is freely available over the counter. Uh, there are multiple formulations. You can get a slightly weaker formulation at 4%. There's also, uh, people that will prescribe a higher formulation at 7%. I haven't seen any data to suggest that 7% is necessarily better than 5%. 7% sounds better, but there is nothing to suggest that it actually is better. Um, the, one of the downsides, certainly with the liquid form of the formulation, it contains propylene glycol, which can irritate the scalp in about a third of the population. So in those uh, individuals, the foam is probably going to be uh, more preferable. So I like uh, topical minoxyl. I think it's got good data support its efficacy. If you use it regularly and you only need to use it once a day, it can be very effective in, in some people. But the thing to be mindful about is that uh, minoxidil, as a general rule, does not stop the underlying process of why someone is losing hair, when I'm specifically talking about androgenic alopecia, which is uh, resulting from an elevation of DHT in individuals. So that mechanism, minoxyl doesn't have an impact on that mechanism. It's just trying to stimulate the hair growth. But nonetheless, I think minoxyl is great. Lastly, my number one recommendation in terms of topical treatments for androgenic alopecia in 2025, uh, number one is topical finasteride. I think topical finasteride is great. Uh, it has got good data now coming out that it really supports it. There's lots of different formulations uh, and strengths that can be used. Uh, people are, are really liking the outcome that they're uh, experiencing with topical finasteride. The incidence of side effects compared to the oral version is a lot less. So if you have been taking a topical, uh, sorry, an oral finasteride, but have been getting side effects, then it's worthwhile considering switching to a topical finasteride. Uh, so something like 0.2% or uh, all the way down to 0.005%. And that dose needs to be discussed with your doctor to try and uh, titrate it specifically for you. But I like this because yes, it can be taken topically. The side effect profile is less compared to the oral, but again, it's addressing the underlying cause of why someone is losing hair if they're experiencing androgenic alopecia. So the finasteride is blocking that 5-alpha reductase enzyme as well. Compared to the topical deuterostride, it's a smaller molecule, therefore penetration is a lot more uh, effective. Uh, so that's uh, a benefit. However, it is only blocking the type 2 version of the enzyme. So theoretically, you know, topical deuterostride is going to potentially be better. But as of this point in time, I'd recommend a topical finasteride. So I hope you found that useful. There's lots of topical treatments on the market. Uh, some like topical minoxyl is available over the counter. Also uh, with the ketoconazole shampoo as well. But if you're looking for something like the, the finasteride or dutasteride, then you're going to need to speak to a doctor who understands hair loss and prescribing for hair loss and be able to uh, give you advice on that. Uh, there are people that you can go see in person. There are also online platforms. Uh, that you can visit that can also assist you with that. Uh, and if you're living in North America, I'd certainly recommend a platform called ulo.co, ulo.co. Full disclosure, I'm an advisor uh, to that, but I really like their platform. They're really good. They're co they're, the method of which they compound their medications is second to none. They've got great customer service. So if you really want, uh, please check it out. I'll put the description, uh, I'll put the, the link in the description below. Uh, but s certainly have a think about topical treatments. If you can, certainly if you can't uh, tolerate the oral treatments, then topical treatments are something worthwhile considering. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you again on the next episode.